Jeremiah, the prophet who wept, and this section is from verse 19 down to verse 27, as I mentioned. And I've entitled this, this is Jeremiah part 47, and this is, where's the rest of the Sabbath? Thus said the Lord to me, go and stand in the people's gate by which the kings of Judah enter and by which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem. Verse 20. And say, hear the word of the Lord, you kings of Judah and all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem who enter by these gates. Thus says the Lord, take care for the sake of your lives and do not bear a burden on the Sabbath day or bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Verse 22. And do not carry a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath or do any work, but keep the Sabbath day holy as I commanded your fathers. Here's a tragic verse. Yet they did not listen or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck that they might not hear and receive instruction. So here's the question, and it's really a question that arises from the text. Well, what's this Sabbath about? I mean, today for us, we're looking at this going, Sabbath, what's that about? For us who are familiar with Scripture, we're probably aware that the Sabbath is a part of the Ten Commandments, the fourth of the Ten Commandments. We're aware of it. But if I was to ask a pastoral question right now, inviting you to respond, my question might be this. Who's tired? You don't have to show me your hand because I've got a pretty good idea that there would hardly be anybody who wouldn't go, actually, I'm really tired. And you know it's not a tiredness like you've just done a hard day's work because here we are near the start of the day and there's like a weariness that we in modern society carry, don't we? You meet people like this all the time. When we were working hard as Australia, there was a cry in the heart of workers to say, well, we're working too hard. We're not spending enough time with our family. Meanwhile, there was another cry from business people that said, we're not making enough money. We want to operate Saturday afternoon and then we want to open Sunday. Saturday afternoon came first, then Sunday came in later. Curiously, I was working in retail when, it, when it, all that happened. I was actually a manager with Kmart and we, we went from six day trading, seven day trading and you know, a very curious thing. We traded seven days and we, we, we did not make one more dollar in sales. But suddenly we've got to work an extra day for it. Hmm. Now that could just be my anecdotal story but I could give you other anecdotes where other business people have said, you know, we now open this extra day and we actually don't make any more money. We're actually making just as much money as when we didn't open on Sunday. Now that's really, really interesting. And there's some major Christian businesses, I mean big businesses, that despite what their competition do, they say, we're not going to open on Sunday. Now, what's that about? Well, I'm glad you asked. What is the Sabbath all about. The Sabbath was originally established by God from the time of creation. The Bible says that he took six days, periods of undefined time, to create the universe and everything in it and then he rested on the Sabbath. He's still resting on the Sabbath or that, that Sabbath seventh day period of rest and that's where God then established that as a pattern for mankind. He established our calendar days and told us that we should work six of those days and rest on the seventh to remember him as creator. The Sabbath rest was designed as a place to, a, a time to refresh man. It was designed for man to be renewed and to come back and remember his creator. He said, you shall function six days and rest on your seventh day, just as I rested on my seventh day. It was to remind us that God is creator. So the Sabbath was to be a period of rest. That was the initial instruction. But that's not the only thing the Sabbath was to be. You remember that Adam and Eve were told that the Sabbath was to be holy. Now what does holy mean? Holy means not ordinary. All the other nations totally disregarded 
the Sabbath. They totally disregarded resting one day to seven. But God wanted Israel to be different. That's that word, holy. He didn't want them to be ordinary. You must be different. And when people ask you why, we see this expression. When people ask you why, we read in Deuteronomy that you shall do this. And when your children ask you why, tell them this. When the nations ask you why do you do this, tell them this. And the idea was that it would give them opportunity to tell the nations about the one true God who created heaven and earth, who deserved obedience. That's what the Sabbath was supposed to be about. It distinguished the Hebrews. It distinguished them. The Sabbath, we read in, uh, Deut- uh, in Leviticus 23, it's the first thing when God says, now these are the special times that I want you to honour. The first one he mentions is the Sabbath. The Sabbath was for worship. There are many things that you're going to look at and go, no, that doesn't make sense. If I give up time, how do I? I'll run out of time. It's kind of like, tithing isn't it you know if i give i'll have less whereas god says if you don't you'll have less if you sow your time you'll reap time hang on if i you're saying if i give my time to god i'll have more time through the week that's been my experience the sabbath was for worship the sabbath was also for witness It was meant to provoke that question. You know, when you leave your driveway on a Sunday and come to church, your neighbours see it. They notice it. Sunday, witness, it's a powerful thing. The Sabbath was for rest. It was meant to be a time of rest. It, It was meant to be a time when you didn't do ordinary activity. The Sabbath was also a shadow of Christ. You see, what, what's, what's Sabbath? It, it's resting from work. Why? Because in the same way that the, the Sabbath speaks of resting from work, do no work, enter into a rest, it's a picture of Jesus. Do all the work before and then rest. That's what Jesus has done for us. Can you save yourself? No, you can't. Jesus Christ has done all the work for you. All the work for your salvation has been done by Jesus. This is why the Sabbath was such a big deal. So the obligations of the Sabbath for today is that we can come together, we can rest, we can honour God as creator, we can be restored, protected, we can be a collective witness together, all of this on a Sunday. That's why I treat Sunday as really important, really special. So here's my challenge to you. Talking about agitation of soul. Here's Jeremiah listing these things as if they were a super big deal. He says, if you get this right, then these blessings, and he describes the blessings, nations will come to you and bring gifts. You will be blessed if you honour me in this. Is there a principle for today? I suspect so. I really do. I really suspect so. And here's my challenge. Maybe you are agitated in soul. Maybe you are physically run down and physically weary. For some of us, we need to tap in to the grace of God that comes from honouring him. One day out of seven. Resting, doing no ordinary work and honouring him. Jesus Christ can be your Sabbath.